This is going to be Psalm 21. Psalm 21, verse 1. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation how greatly shall he rejoice. The king here is David, and he is rejoicing in his salvation. When you're saved and you know it, it gives you a joy in your heart that nothing else will. The lost rich people of this world do not have this joy. The lost successful people of this world do not have this joy. Ephesians 2.12 explains the state of lost people in this world. It says having no hope and without God in the world. The actor Jim Carrey said, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they have dreamed of so that they can see it's not the answer. So even a lost, rich, famous actor knows money and fame can't give you happiness. But David says, In thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. Psalm 21, 2, Thou hast given him his heart's desire, and hast not withholden the request of his lips, Selah. These psalms have more than one application. David can be talking about himself, and at the same time, the verse can be a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. The heart's desire of the Lord Jesus Christ is to sit on the throne as king. In verse 3, it says, thou, For thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. This is what will happen. Jesus Christ will sit on the throne in Jerusalem with a crown of pure gold on his head. In Revelation 19.12, it says his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Revelation 4.10, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sit on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne. So the Lord Jesus Christ is going to wear a crown. And he's going to have many crowns. And David said in verse 3, For thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness. Prevent means to go before. So the Lord went before him with the blessings of goodness. And at salvation, you got the blessings of goodness. God took your badness and gave you the Lord Jesus Christ's goodness. No matter the situation you're in, you can find the blessings of goodness. Sometimes I walk out from work and it's a nice sunny day. That's a blessing. And I wonder my, to myself, why I'm not in a tornado or a hurricane? Or why is it just the sun not so hot that it's just burning, burning me alive? Because that's what I deserve. But God doesn't do that. In Matthew 5, 45, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. I recently seen where a, a young couple and their kid were killed in a tornado. And I'm thinking, why didn't that happen to me? That's what I deserve. But he goes before us with the blessings of goodness. Sometimes the bad things happen, but for the most part, it, all that we have is good. In Psalm 21, 4, it says, He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him even length of days, forever and ever. Uh, David may be dead, but he's not completely dead. He's going to live forever somewhere. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When you did that, you got eternal life. When you believed on Jesus Christ to be your crucified, buried and risen Savior, that is like asking for length of days, forever and ever. Because that is what you were promised for doing that. You may die, but you're not going to stay dead forever. Psalm 21, 5, His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. David constantly praises the Lord. He is constantly giving glory to God for salvation. Uh, we never need to give glory to ourselves. Uh, I'm not going to boast in anything I've done because the Lord did it all. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 
So David said, Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. When you get saved, you were made a king and a priest. You will rule with Jesus Christ one day. As it says in Revelation 5.10, And hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Psalm 21.6, For thou hast made him most blessed forever. For thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. What does his countenance look like? In Revelation 1.16, And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Imagine seeing the Lord's face at the rapture and in the millennial reign. The phrase, brighten up a room, is an understatement. So David says, Thou hast made me exceeding glad with thy countenance. And he says in verse 7, For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High he shall not be moved. A king that trusts in himself shall be brought low. Daniel 2.21 shows that the Lord removeth kings and setteth up kings. He has the power to bring a king to his knees. The king that trusteth in the Lord is better off. Revelation 19.16 shows that he is king of kings. The Lord Jesus Christ is king of kings and lord of lords. God is on your side when you trust in him, and then you won't be moved. So David says, For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High he shall not be moved. Verse 8, Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Uh, nobody's getting away with anything. The Lord sees every secret society meeting in a secret building in a dark room plotting against the Lord and his people because that is what they do. It is a big conspiracy going on. Psalm 2.2 2 says, The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. The Lord sees what's going on in the dark. In the places where men think they're getting away with evil, there is a dark, sinister plot being carried out by men who think that they're getting away with it. There is a billion-dollar sex trafficking industry. They think they're getting away with it. But David said, Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. God sees all the wicked stuff going on. He sees all the kids being killed and raped and and all the wicked things going on in the dark. Daniel 2.22 says, He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. Proverbs 15.3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Psalm 21.9, Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. This is the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is where he will slay all the God-haters. This is where he is going to set up his kingdom and rule in righteousness. He will sit on the throne judging right. Nobody will be able to impeach him. He'll never have to debate anybody because he's the only one worthy anyway. He will be clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. He will have on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And it will be a lot bigger of an event than any of the president rallies put together. You see, he's the king of kings and lord of lords. The real king is coming back with all of his supporters with him. And I won't need an I voted sticker. You'll know who I voted for because I'm riding behind him. And I'll look just like him. David said, Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven. Malachi 4.1 For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. The day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And David said, Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven. Malachi and David talking about the same event, the second coming. Paul talks about it, Second Thessalonians 1, 8, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing hurts worse than being burned with fire. That's the worst pain that you can feel. Psalm 21.10, Their fruit shalt thou destroy from the earth, their seed from among the children of men. One of the seeds is the serpent's seed. Genesis 3.15 shows us the devil has a seed. It's the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to be tossed into the lake of fire. 2 Thessalonians 2.8 and then shall that wicked be revealed, the Antichrist, 
whom the Lord should consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Revelation 19.20, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. That is the fate of all lost people if they don't get saved. Psalm 21.11 For they intended evil against thee. They imagine a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. So they intend evil against the Lord. Yet God works it out for good. In Genesis 50.20 Joseph says, But as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Uh, they thought evil against the Lord to put him on the cross and murder an innocent man, sh shed innocent blood, but God meant it for good to save many people alive. Psalm 21, 12, Therefore shalt thou, shalt thou make them turn their back when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. Remember, if you've been listening to this psalm series, we talked about the Lord's arrows at the second coming. All these tough guys are going to turn their backs and run for the dens and the rocks of the mountains when they see the Lord coming with ten thousands of his saints. As it says in Revelation 6.15, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. That's what's going to happen. These Tough guys, they're going to be running from the Lord. They're going to turn their back when he makes ready his arrows. Psalm 21, 13, Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength. So will we sing and praise thy power. The Lord alone will be exalted in his kingdom. Isaiah 2, 17, And the loftiness of men shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. David says we will sing and praise thy power. The true purpose of music was to worship God. Ephesians 5.19, speaking to yourselves in psalms, in hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. But the Lord alone will be exalted in that day, and we will sing and praise his power. And it's not going to be this wicked music we have today. It's going to be real psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. And it's going to be the greatest time the world has ever seen. We're not going to have to worry about any of the bad stuff that's going on in 2020. And 2020 is going to be pale in comparison to the tribulation. But we're not going to have to worry about any of those things anymore because the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. Not a man or any other false god. It's going to be the Lord. And that's the only way you can have perfect peace is with the Lord on the throne and him being exalted.